So you're a solo giga chad who tears through the server at breakneck speed. You're the next alone in Tokyo, a lone wolf killing machine with a target painted squarely on your back. An angry online revenge raid is always around the corner, but you're gonna come prepared when it does, inside the Death Blossom. The Death Blossom is a highly compact, fully equipped solo chad base designed for aggressive, PvP-focused lone wolves who are ready to defend solo against an online raid. Disconnectable TCs, compact gatehouses, a spacious, well-protected compound with visibility windows throughout, a dirt-cheap four-triangle core with two primary loot rooms, an efficient, defendable shell, 360-degree wide gap shooting floors, a mix of large and narrow inner peaks, a dedicated bed and battery section, full visibility ankle biter roof peaks, and a spacious, highly shielded roof with 100% auto turret coverage. With all of this at your fingertips, you're practically going to be asking to get online raided. And that's not the only raid you're going to be looking for, because this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. If you haven't heard of Raid by now, you either work in a brick factory or you're literally just a brick. You can download the game for free for mobile or PC using my links in the description below. Raid is a turn-based RPG with impressive graphics and an even more impressive lineup of characters. Not only are there over 600 playable champions, but there's a colorful variety of bad guys and bosses to fight too, like this one. This badass motherfucker is Malik Kavar, the Guardian of the Void Keep. His team basically incited him after he shared a bunch of crazy conspiracy theory shit with him. But obviously he rebuilt and now he's fucking loaded, so you better go triple his ass and take his loot. The thing about Malik is that he's more toxic than a clan of door camping Primlock 12 year olds screaming into their microphones. And unlike in Rust, you can't just slide the voice volume to zero to make it stop. If you can manage to shield and heal through all of his endless poison though, and take him down, all that juicy loot can be yours. My favorite part about Raid Shadow Legends is the sheer amount of artistic flavor. From the moody shades and gold accents of the Dark Elves, to the demonic ninja and samurai of the Shadowkin to the brutish primal flavor of the skinwalkers, all the way back to the medieval basics of the Sacred Order. There's just so much to see and collect. The game is constantly pushing out fresh new content, such as this month's update, The Guardian Ring. It adds a ton of new ways to use your champions, a new way to get legendaries that you missed out on, and an entirely new way to upgrade your champions as well. It's like that camper van update I was hyped for, except they actually come out on time. If you're new to the game and want to get in on the action with a huge head start, for the next 30 days only, just scan my QR code or use the link in the description below to get a free XP boost, energy refill, an ancient shard, and an extra 200,000 silver. You'll also instantly get a new champion, who just so happens to be from my favorite faction, the Shadowkin. So go get the free loot. In its final form, the base's upkeep can be easily maintained with the spoils of war from slaying farmers, and the numbers you see on screen here take into account every single endgame upgrade such as armored doors and a full sheet metal shell. So prior to making these expensive upgrades, you can expect the base to cost significantly less than what you see here. Let's take a tour of the base. Really quick before the tour, this base was built live over at twitch.tv slash templetaps. I owe a massive thank you to the numerous members of our community that made significant contributions to the end product. This base was basically built by all of us. Make sure you stop by next time I'm live if you want to get in on the action. Also, if you like free stuff, entering competitions, or just hanging out with some really cool cats, get in the Discord already. Anyway, here's a tour. Starting outside the compound, we see one of three mini Satori disconnectable TCs. In the event that our main TC gets raided, a single triangle roof placed like so allows us to sever the build privilege and replace our main tool cupboard. Then we can reconnect it just as easily to prevent future raiders from building on our base when the main TC is destroyed. Hopping inside one of our gatehouses, we can peek through either side of these embrasures to fight back in or out of our compound during a raid. Heading inside the compound itself, we see ample room for large furnaces. A strong crossfire of auto turrets will prevent your furnaces from being grubbed and give raiders a hell of a tough time breaching the space. And sidewall windows allow us to check the surroundings of our compound safely from inside. Heading into any of our three shell airlocks reveals some drop storage immediately and an extremely high visibility window area to locate raiders once they're in the breach. 
There's plenty of room for deployables in the shell, and a tight network of auto turrets provides incredible coverage of the area to make a ground floor raid extremely difficult. Heading up one of our three symmetrical mobility chutes takes us to our bed and battery floor. The battery is tucked away high and centered, so even in the most brutal pummel style raids, your auto turrets can stay online long into the fight. Mobility is smooth across the entire floor, and a mix of narrow and wide inner peak downs give us 360 degree coverage of the ring to rain down fire on potential raiders. This entire floor is sectioned off three times over with garage doors to maintain control during a raid, and heading out any of our wide gap shooting floor modules gives us angles down and around the entire compound. Ankle biter roof peaks allow for prevention of top down raids in the early game before we set up turrets. And heading up top through one of our three identical roof access points reveals a wide open space that's covered by three well-guarded auto turrets and a nice assortment of roof cracks give us additional angles into and all the way around the compound. Heading down to our second floor loot room, we see a nice assortment of storage and our tier 3 bench. And finally, we go down to the core itself, tucked away deep at the bottom of the base with a bunch more storage and a well-protected TC compartment. That pretty much makes up the base, now let's learn how to build it. Because of this base's relative size and simplicity, we're only going to build it in two stages. The first and second floor starter stage, and then the main base. Ensure that you have a relatively flat spot to build, and try to place the foundations as low as possible. This will ensure that our shell is easier to move around in later. The core is four triangles, and you're going to want to place the TC in one of them like so. The two triangles next to the TC will get walled in like this with a double door facing outwards. You can use this space for your starter deployables during the first couple hours of your wipe. It has no airlock though, so you're going to want to be careful about people going deep and you're not going to want to keep it like this for long. In order to get an airlock, let's expand upwards. Close yourself in from the back and place a furnace like so to jump up to the second floor. Above this space, we're going to create a classic half shelf jump up like so. Two full walls on the sides, a half height floor tile like so, and a cap on it with a sheet metal door to close it in for now. This will become a garage door later. Turn around and then build your third floor jump up on the right side. This is done with two walls, a sheet metal door opening outwards, and temporarily for now, a furnace. Later, this will be your T2 or T3 bench for a jump up. On the left side, we're gonna create a three-way single door airlock. Close everything in, and then grab your single doors. You're gonna want the door on the inside to be facing out, and the one on the left to be facing in. The one on the right is totally up to you. This way, we have two airlocks on the left and right side. When either one of these are open and we die, nobody can get into the base. Now this will do us fine as a starter until we collect the scrap for a tier 2 bench, but it's not going to be that much storage, so we're going to want to expand it as soon as possible. In order to get up and down while we're trying to grind for this, we need this twig build up like so. Don't worry, we won't keep it for long. Once you've acquired a tier 2 or tier 3 bench, a few more materials, and the garage door blueprint, we can move on to expanding the base. At this point in the build, I'm going to be building everything at its final level of material upgrade. In-game, you'll just have to make upgrades as materials become available. There aren't any fancy upgrade orders that are needed in this build because you can access every single tile in the base at any time, so don't worry about missing out on anything. Once you're ready to do the expansion, remove everything in your core. Hop up to the second floor and get rid of this double door on the left side. Get rid of the furnace as well, and then deploy your tier 2 bench. I'm placing a tier 3 bench here, but you'll probably have to go for a tier 2 one first and a tier 3 one later. You're gonna have to craft one garage door, pick up the bench, and then place the bench back down. Don't worry, this is the only time you'll have to do it. Remove every door in the base and replace it with a garage door. Come down into the core and do the same here as well. Create a half shelf loot room like so, which will be our main loot room. Make sure you don't forget to place a garage door in between this loot room. If you don't do it now, it's going to be a pain in the ass later because you're going to have to pick everything up. Now you can begin outfitting your main loot room. It's basically just a four large box configuration with four small boxes next to them. Nothing here has to be that precise, but you do want to make sure it's as far back as possible so that you can still place your sleeping bag like so. 
On the top side, you can basically just yeet everything into place. It doesn't matter that much. The last thing to do in this room to complete it is to place an armored window in the window frame. Optionally, you could also upgrade the window frame to sheet metal and rotate it towards you such that both sides get treated as hard side. Now we can't create our vending machine loot room in the second floor until we have third floor access down to the core, which requires the shell, but we can place one large box and one small box here for now. Technically, more efficient would be two barbecues and two small boxes here, but it's quite finicky. And let's be honest, you're a turbo chad, right? You don't have the time for that. In order to build out the bulk of the rest of the base, come up here, place a triangle floor frame, upgrade it to sheet, and the rest of the ceiling too. Now we can build our shell, which will allow us to get the rest of our deployables down and really start living out our wipe. Remove the twig here so we can begin the footprint to our shell. It's gonna look identical on all three sides, but I'm gonna show you the quickest way to create it. Start with a square, then a triangle, then a square, and remove the first two. Now place a triangle on the right side of the last square and remove the square itself. Build back with three more triangles so that we're left with this perfect hourglass shape just at the edge of the base. Remove the outside ones. Now the hard part is over. Place a square on either side of the hourglass and that's one third of our shell footprint done. Now we're basically just gonna build around the base to create that on the other two sides. Two triangles here and a square. Now we've started the exact same shape on the next side. It's easy this time. We go four triangles to the right, remove the other ones and place a square on the other end. Now we've got a second portion of our shell complete. The third one is the same. Two triangles, a square, remove the two triangles, four triangles here, remove the two on the edge, and then place one more square. And that's the shell footprint. Do keep in mind that the shell footprint is not yet connected to the main base, so it will decay over time. Don't worry about that, as as soon as we put up the walls and reconnect it to the main base, it'll start getting upkept. Come around to the hourglass shape and create our shell airlock on the left side like so with a window next to it. An armored door goes on the inside of the airlock and a sheet metal door can go on the outside. On the right side, it's just going to be windows on both sides, triangle on the top, and then a garage door on the inside. This garage door is important to maintain a higher raid cost through the bottom of the shell. Make your way around the inside of the square foundations like so with sheet metal walls to complete the first layer of the shell. Then immediately afterwards, build all the way around with sheet metal walls on the second layer of the shell. And that completes the outer shell itself. In order to prevent the shell from decaying, let's connect it to the main base. This is done extremely quickly by placing a floor tile here and a wall frame here. Demolish the floor tile and then eventually upgrade this frame to sheet metal. As you can see, now there are three points of connection between the shell and the main base and nothing will decay. Before we can start placing down large furnaces and really cooking up the rest of this base, we need to get our compound down. So let's finish up our shell and our inner peaks and then get to work on that. Create this half shelf build out outside of each of the three corners of your shell so that you can create a half height floor tile like so. In most cases, three furnaces will fit underneath of it. However, if you placed your foundations extremely low, these might not fit. Don't worry, other deployables will fit instead and the furnaces can go in the middle of the shell. The configuration of the actual deployables in the shell is totally up to you, but I'm just going to be showing what I did in the tour, which was a repair bench and a research table on one side, and then mixing tables on the other three sides. What you choose to squeeze inside the shell is totally up to you. You can fit a lot of things in here, a bunch of large boxes, a bunch of extra furnaces, additional utility items such as lockers, etc, etc. Just put whatever you need. And also remember not to put anything valuable in here until we finish the floor above it. Each one of these triangle shoots gets a sheet metal floor frame with a ladder hatch inside of it at the top like so. And then we can close the inner peaks off by creating the inner peaks themselves with these triangles here. Keep in mind that if you plan on doing the build in the exact order you see in the video here, you don't actually want to place these peaks yet because they would technically prevent you from placing the shooting floor in this area later. You're going to want to place the shooting floor triangles on the outside of the base in these spaces before you build the inner peaks. Oh yeah, and don't forget to demolish this build up either. Before we can put the compound walls down, we have to get our compound separators and our gatehouses down first. In order to do this, start with the corners of the base. Build one triangle here, one square here, and one triangle at the end. 
Now place a wall frame on the first triangle you placed to connect it to the main base like so. Then you can remove the square in the first triangle. Right here we're going to place a window frame, and wall frames will go on either side. If you want, you could place garage doors on both of the outer wall frames at some point and wire them up to HBHF sensors so that the auto turrets only expose themselves when enemies are inside your compound, but that's up to you. Close this section up with a window so nobody can crawl in, and then you're done. Now we just have to do the wide gap gatehouses. Follow the build out carefully because it's important for the shooting floor later on. Go one triangle out, a square out, and another triangle out. Then turn around and build three squares out from that. Cap it with a triangle and remove everything. Start back at the triangle and build in one, two, three, four more triangles. Then a square, a triangle, and a square on either side. Now turn around and just remove the triangles that you started with. And that's your wide gap. You can upgrade all of this to stone, although eventually the ones in front will have to be sheet metal. Turn around to the outside of the wide gap and create your gatehouse like so. You want embrasures inside of the left and right windows, and if you have it, you should use industrial doors so that you get vision outside of the front of the gatehouse as well. If you don't, regular single doors are fine. A bar metal barricade goes on top, and that completes the gatehouse. Before you build your shooting floor, you'll have to place wall frames up your wide gaps like so. And eventually, the foundations holding them up and the wall frames themselves should be upgraded to sheet metal for stability during a raid. Currently, our gatehouse is not being upkept by anything. In order to fix that, we're going to build our three mini Satori disconnectable external TCs. Start outside the gatehouse and build this twig configuration. Four triangles, and then a square at the end, and two triangles after that. We're going to upgrade this first triangle here to sheet, and this one to stone. Face towards the base, and place two sheet metal half walls on the sheet metal triangle foundation like so. On the right side, you can do a full wall. The half walls on the left side are important though, don't miss them. Inside of this space, we can place our TC and window it off with a regular glass window. You could use armored windows instead for a full 8 rockets of protection from each TC, but to be honest, across all three external TCs, even with just glass windows, that's an extra 18 rockets of protection before people can grief the main base. Remove all of the twig foundations, and then connect the gatehouse to the external TC by placing these frames. Two triangles on this side, a square on this side, and two more triangles in the middle to connect then upgrade everything to sheet metal. It's also important that you upgrade the door frame of the gatehouse and the foundation to sheet metal so people can't disconnect at a discount by destroying the stone portion. In the event that your main TC gets raided, raiders will not be able to grief or seal themselves into the base because these TCs will overlap the build privilege. This also means you cannot place a TC back in your main base yet either though. In order to fix this, simply disconnect all three of the externals by placing these two pieces of twig and then go inside your main base and place back your main TC. Then you can reconnect your externals like so. Now let's place our compound walls. This is done extremely easily because all we have to do is align ourselves with the gatehouse and place the wall directly in between the embrasure. Once that wall is placed, you can see there's a pretty good gap on both sides and the wall next to it will place naturally up against the window. Then simply repeat the same process on the other side. And there you go. Large furnaces will fit neatly in every single corner, and refineries can fit basically anywhere in the compound as well. Now we can move on to building the third floor and the shooting floor. First thing you want to do is come up to your access points on the corners here and create a half shelf elevator. Make sure that the outside of it is sheet metal. Close it off with a garage door, and then move on to these two triangles on the side of the shell. The left one gets a half wall and a window frame, both facing the inside of the base, and the right one gets a wall frame with a garage door. Close in the roof by placing two triangles on the corners, and a square on each end, with a triangle to seal it off in the middle. Then come out to your wide gaps, and fill them in with sheet metal floors like so. Make your way around with window frames like so. Place a wall frame on the left side of the wide gap here, and place a double door facing either direction. On the right side, you want to create a half shelf jump up, and you also want to place a wall frame there. Whether or not you put a garage door in it is up to you though. 
place a roof on each one of these three triangles and make sure they're all coming off the main base, not the wide gap. And then use half walls and a roof to cap off your ankle biter roof peaks. Fill up each window frame with a vertical metal embrasure, and optionally, place a glass window behind the last one so that you don't get shot while you're trying to use the ankle biters. A horizontal metal embrasure goes in the ankle biter itself, and optionally, a stone frame. The stone frame helps protect your head even further and makes it more difficult for people to use the gap against you by shooting into your core. At this point, we have a fully usable wide gap shooting floor, and a third floor is somewhat protected. We will have to finish the roof before the third floor is completely protected, but we can put our battery in now if we want. Encase it like so in sheet metal walls, and place a window on this edge. Place the large battery inside, and try to make it as far back as possible to leave room for other electrical components against the walls, then window it off. We're going to place a bed underneath the window, and then around on the other side we're going to place a locker against this wall. If you're anything like alone in Tokyo, you're going to rack up gear faster than you know where to put it, so there are plenty of places reserved for additional large boxes around the inner peaks that won't obstruct your ability to shoot down at opponents or move around in the ring. After we're finished outfitting this floor, the last thing we need to do is separate it into thirds by placing these wall frame and garage door combos. This is important so that we don't lose control of all three portions of our inner peaks should they get blown into. Now we can outfit our second floor loot room. Whether or not you used a single or double door in the airlock here isn't really important, either one is viable. The deployables are going to be the same. A small box goes under the tier 3 bench here, and then we can remove all of our single doors. Place vending machines like so, and then upgrade the door frames to sheet metal. A barbecue and small box combo can go underneath of the vending machine, and then a sleeping bag and one more small box can fit in the middle space. The last decoration to make to the interior of the base is to go back down into the shell and place the depot boxes next to your high visibility airlocks. Before we actually put up a windmill to get power and place our auto turrets, we're going to need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to upgrade the entirety of our roof here to sheet metal to protect our battery in our bedroom. Then, we need to create our elevators up to the roof. Do so with a classic half shelf jump up like so, and upgrade the walls to sheet metal. The roof can stay stone. Close it off with garage doors, and then come over here to make our auto turret pods in the corner opposite to the ankle biters. Now we can finish up our roof battlements. Place two triangle roof ramps right here. Then, use two twig square floor tiles to aid in the placement of these triangle roof ramps here. Now the last thing we need to do in this build is place the auto turrets, but before we do so, we'll need a windmill. I'll show you how to make a basic windmill tower, but I'll also show you how to make an optional heli tower if you want to spend the extra resources. So the normal windmill tower requires you to build frames up like this, which you can use netting to climb during the building process, then jump up on top and place the wind turbine. If you want to power 9 turrets off of one large battery, you'll actually have to go up even higher than this, maybe another 4 frames. If you don't want to go up higher, just recombine a few solar panels and you should have enough power to be good to go. There are many ways you could build a heli tower in the center of the space, but I'm just going to show you a quick spitball idea. We use a 3-way airlock here, and then a hatch to lead up to the neck of the tower. Build up to your desired height, and then build a square in the same formation as the way they are in the roof. Surround it with windows and embrasures, and that's a basic heli tower. Remember to add a hatch at the top, and bridge any gap in the neck by placing a regular ladder so that you can actually make it up and down. If you want to go full alone in Tokyo mode, you're probably going to want to replace one of these three sides with a bedroom. This will allow you to hide an M2 kit up here behind a few rockets of protection and use it during an online raid, as well as having an alternative spawn point should you lose your bedroom in the third floor. There's an endless possibility of ways you could build up the roof battlements on this base and the tower itself, and it's really up to you and your needs and how much you're willing to spend. Don't be afraid to get creative with it. You could try your own catwalk configuration, you could have multiple bedrooms off the corners, you could have ramp peaks down the squares, it's really up to you. And the last thing to do is place down the auto turrets. In terms of progression, I would place at least a couple on the ground first, and then at least one on the roof, and then finish off with the ones in the ring. And that pretty much makes up the build. 
Once again, I want to give a huge shout out to almost 40 people who were in my Twitch chat when we built this base together. And of course, another huge shout out to everybody on my YouTube for supporting me in my journey so far. As always, take care and I hope to see you again soon.